Hi there, this is a short video on an aspect of macroeconomics and we're going to take a look at the difference between a cyclical and a structural budget deficit. Now this is specifically on the AQA syllabus but also on the Edexcel syllabus as well so it's an important one to understand at a macro level. So a budget deficit of course is when the government is spending more than it's taking in in tax and therefore the government has to borrow to, to fund it, or finance a deficit. In most countries, there are multiple causes of fiscal deficits. Some of them are cyclical, some of them are structural. So typically during a recession, for example, when unemployment's going up, the tax base of the economy tends to shrink. There are fewer people in work paying income tax than national insurance. And uh, also if consumer spending is falling, often, often the root cause of a recession, companies are making less profit, Therefore, they pay less in corporation tax. Consumers are spending less, so therefore VAT receipts tend to diminish. So falling consumption can also depress tax revenues and lead to a rising deficit. And if there's an increase in inactivity, inactivity is people uh, who are out of, out of employment, but not necessarily counted as unemployed. So perhaps people who've taken early retirement or people who are not, not working full-time, or part-time because they can't uh, can't find a job or there's some sort of disincentive stopping them taking work. When economic, economic inactivity goes up, if there are more workless households, for example, that puts extra pressure on the welfare benefit levels. Welfare benefits are now capped, but uh, there would be an increase in uh, universal credit. It may be the case that the deficit goes up for a deliberate reason where the government decides to inject a fiscal stimulus into the economy, either through an increase in public sector pay or perhaps an increase in investment spending, even at a fall in direct tax. So there will be a short term increase in the fiscal deficit because of a fiscal stimulus. And the deficit might also go up if the government ends up paying more interest on its debt. Typically, in a given year, the UK government spends somewhere between 40 and 45 billion pounds a year on debt interest. So if the yield on a government bond goes up, then the government would have to pay more in interest on its existing debt. The debt service cost goes up, adding to the fiscal deficit. And equally, there can also be some demographic factors. This is one of the structural factors affecting the budget position of the government. So, for example, the ageing population uh, causes the, the total amount the government spends on the state, the basic state pension to, to go up. Uh, there could also be a structural policy in place, for example, the triple lock, where pensions rise by a minimum amount, inflation, or 2.5%, or the growth of average earnings, whichever is the higher. So there could be some structural population factors affecting the size of the deficit. So in a nutshell, how do we distinguish between a cyclical and a structural deficit? Well, the cyclical fiscal balance, the cyclical budget balance, uh, explains a situation where the size of a country's or government's deficit is influenced, is affected by where the economy is in its cycle. So during the boom times, tax revenues from, uh, from companies and people are relatively high. Spending on unemployment benefit and other welfare benefits tends to be low. Therefore, the cyclical balance you'd expect to be pretty good. Indeed, the government may run a surplus because of the strength of the economy. The structural fiscal balance is, I think, from my point of view of my video tonight, the most important bit. So the structural budget or fiscal balance is that part of the deficit which is not related, not related to where the economy is in the cycle. It's the part of the deficit which will not disappear if and when an economy recovers. So hopefully you see the difference between the cyclical and the structural deficit. The structural deficit makes an adjustment for where a country is in the cycle. The part of the deficit doesn't go away when the economy recovers. Now, how does this all relate to some data, some actual figures for the UK? What we have here is a chart showing the annual budget balance for the UK government and measured as a percentage of the size of the economy, percentage of GDP since 1999. Deliberately put those early years in because you can see that in 1999-2000, the turn of millennium, the government was running actually a budget surplus, a negative deficit in that, in that sense, 
albeit a small one. But since then, you can see that actually in most years, every year since 2002, 2001, the government's been running a budget deficit. So what can we see from this data? Well, we can see from the data that in particular, uh, the size of the structural deficit increased substantially from around 2008 to 2009 onwards. We know that the government, that the UK economy went into a recession in 2008. And you can see that the orange bit, the cyclical deficit, went from surplus to deficit. That is sometimes known as the workings of the automatic stabilisers. In a recession, tax revenues fall, government spending on welfare and other items goes up. So it's almost inevitable that there will be a cyclical fiscal deficit in the immediate aftermath of a recession. And hopefully you can see that the UK goes into recession in 2008, that orange segment becomes quite hefty, adds to the total deficit. Indeed, in 2009, 2010, the fiscal deficit peaked at nearly 10% of the value of UK national output. And gradually, in recent times, gradually the size of the orange segment has shrunk. The economy has been recovering. Unemployment has been falling. It's now at a 42-year low. Uh, to use another macro indicator, the size of the output gap has been getting smaller. So actual output has been getting closer to its longer and productive potential. And because the economy has been growing since 2010, 2011, the size of the cyclical fiscal deficit has been shrinking. Indeed, in 2016, 2017, according to the Office of Budget Responsibility, there was not a cyclical fiscal deficit. And one would expect that because we are eight years on from the end of the last recession. However, look at the blue segment. The blue segment remains in deficit. So a key evaluation point for you is that the British economy appears to have quite a sizable structural fiscal deficit which at the moment is between 25 and 3% of GDP. That's the bit of the deficit that doesn't go away once the economy has recovered. Now, it's come down. The structural deficit has fallen. Uh, government policies, for example, to limit welfare and to try and increase uh, tax take, particularly from people with a second or third income, may have had a, a, an effect there. But one has to think of other reasons why there could still be a structural fiscal deficit in the economy. Is it, for example, in part the result of corporate tax avoidance, companies making huge profits but paying very little in corporation tax? Is it wider tax avoidance and tax evasion by individuals? Uh, is it, for example, a, a structurally high level of government spending, which the government's finding it quite hard to, to bring down, particularly in areas such as healthcare and uh, transport and defence? Either way, Eight years into recovery, the British government still has quite a sizable fiscal deficit and they're hoping to move the deficit into balance by 2021, maybe 2022, but it's unlikely we're going to get to the sort of budget surpluses that we saw nearly 20 years ago. So there we go. I've just taken you through the difference between the cyclical and the structural budget deficit. In a nutshell, in a recession, in a downturn, the cyclical deficit goes up and in fact should disappear, perhaps become a surplus during a boom time. The structural deficit is that part of the fiscal deficit which doesn't go away when, the, when an economy has recovered from a previous recession. And the UK does have, albeit shrinking, it does still have a sizable structural budget deficit. So quite an important idea in, in fiscal policy and macroeconomics and it's one of those factors which is perhaps holding the government back from being able to lift its own spending, perhaps in order to try and stimulate demand during this period of Brexit uncertainty. OK, thank you.